Hi Flyers, good morning. Eric Mueller here, day six of the Megadoo. It's hard to believe it's almost over. One more day to go, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Today, we're here at United headquarters in downtown Chicago. We're gonna go upstairs for some interactive sessions. We're gonna do a little dialogue with United. After that, Hyatt has a little treat for us this afternoon. I can't say much about it yet, but you're gonna to wanna to see it. Tonight, another amazing dinner, some fundraising, some country music, some line dancing. It's gonna be a, a little giddy up tonight. But in the meantime, we're gonna get our show started and head upstairs, so we'll see you there. The day started with Q&A sessions with different United departments, including social media, marketing, airport operations, e-commerce, and Mileage Plus. Then it was up to the 99th floor for a surprise speaker. You know, 2012 has been a tough year for a lot of people, including United. But 2013, I think, will be a much better year in, in all the things we're putting in, whether it's the Big Bends or the Wi-Fi or the Dreamliner or all the things that we're doing on our fleet, but also at our airports, improvements we're making in our airports, the training of our own agents, because we're next year's going to be a heavy year focus on operational reliability and customer service. We're training 100% of our agents, 100% of our flight agents worldwide on customer service, because we know that the experience of flight is what can differentiate us, along with, of course, our, our, our leading network. So there's a lot, of, a lot of really good things coming, but we've, we've spent this year integrating and making the investments we need to roll out for the customers in 2013 and beyond, and I think it's going to be a really, really good year, um, and, and very good for the customers and also good for our coworkers, because this summer, we did not run a good operation. <laughs> you may have noticed. Um, <laughs> And that's tough on everybody. And there, there you know, lots of reasons for that, but that is behind us, and that's part of, part of the pain of the integration. But running a good operation, making sure that we are on time, making sure that you get there where you, when you need to get there with your underwear, uh, making, sure you make, making sure you make your connections. And that makes it easier on you as customers, easier on our coworkers, and makes for a much more pleasant flight experience. Because we all know that you can be on a brand new airplane with the coolest stuff. And if, if that plane is late, and, uh, and, 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 you're, and you're not treated well by an agent or a flight attendant, that flight can be just absolutely miserable despite a fine product. Or you could even have you know, an older piece of equipment. And if that flight's running on time and you're being treated well, uh, you, know, you have a completely different flight experience. In fact, even on a late flight, if you're treated well, you can have a good flight experience. So we're gonna be very heavily focused on delivering really good customer service, being operation reliable, and then having, we have without question the best network in the world. And it is a non-reproducible network. There is no airline that can reproduce our network. And that gives a lot of power for us in attracting and retaining business customers. But we need to do a good job every day when we do that. All right, I'm not sure where I am or what's going on. Hyatt grabbed me and they dumped me on this bus and they put this mask on me and they said we're going to some kind of top secret location. So I'm not quite sure what's about to happen, but I guess I'm going to find out. So we're here and I'm not quite sure what it is. You know, they've just brought us around. Oh, wow. This facility is actually a mock-up place for all of the different rooms for Hyatt House and Hyatt Place. So we've got different rooms representing how they're going to build out the properties. We've got mocked up hotel doors that don't go anywhere so you can see exactly what it'll feel like in the hallway of the actual property. We've even got different pieces of carpet to show what those will look like in front of the rooms. We use this for a combination of things. One is as we look at new product and we redevelop our designs and continually stay ahead of both the consumer needs and what they're looking for, along with what the competitive sets are doing as well, and trying to be innovative in looking at the future rather than where, than where we're at here today. In this facility, we have all the different select brands within Hyatt Place and Hyatt House. And what's important with the Hyatt House program and the Hyatt Place International programs is from a consumer standpoint, the consumer has not experienced these rooms yet. So this is truly very much a behind the scenes sneak peek as to what is coming out with those brands. The room I'm in is one of the mock-ups for Hyatt House. Now Hyatt House was previously Summerfield Suites and this is a room that no one has ever seen before. They haven't built these yet. These are going to be part of the new construction for Hyatt House and then they'll redo the older Summerfield Suites rooms as well. And like I said, this is a mock-up. We're in an office building, but they've even shown us what the connecting doors will look like between rooms. Nobody's home here today. We're here in the mock-up of the bedroom for the King Suite for Hyatt House. Now you'll see behind the window they've set up some lights so it looks like daylight. Here on the bed we've got actual linens, we've got the sheets, the pillows. I mean, the idea is to be as detailed as possible and make this just like a real hotel room. And if you've ever stayed in a real hotel room, you'll appreciate this last detail. Hyatt even put a Gideon Bible in the bedside stand. 
I can't help but be struck by the level of detail in these hotel room mock-ups. These are the actual shower fixtures that will be used. This is the real shower door. You can see the towels set up just like housekeeping would place them for the room. And even the sink is just the same. Now, of course, there's no water because this is a mock-up and technically we're in an office building right now. But the level of detail even goes down to the toiletries, your toothpaste, your shampoo, your soap, and of course, your white ginger soothing massage bar. The room I'm sitting in now is a king room for Hyatt Place for the Americas. Now we've got a big wardrobe, we've got a 42 inch flat screen TV, you've got your built in dresser, your mini fridge, desk and work area, and probably the best thing, plenty of room to have your friends over and have a party in the room. Woohoo! Speaking of parties, the night ended with the Giddy Up Party, a country western themed evening with live music, live dancing, and the long awaited Mega Do raffle. Pretty girl gets the system wide right here. And the main prize, the new iPad Mini, donated by Miles Point and Randy Peterson. All right, here we are, the end of day six of the Megadoo. It's the last full day. We had United, we had Jeff Smizek, we had the very cool behind the scenes stuff from Hyatt, and then we had this awesome party. And I just found out a moment ago, it looks like between the raffle and all the other charity components of Megadoo, we've raised somewhere around $100,000. That's six figures for charity, which is pretty damn impressive. You know what? I think tonight is the night that instead of going right to sleep, it's a good night to stay up and have a good time. So we'll see you tomorrow at the farm. Good night.